Hi there, Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. I'm going to put together a, a video here showing how to use Insert Part as a way to create a master model and then create parts using that master model, meaning that you don't have dependencies between the parts within an assembly. So the parts are only dependent on the master model. So the subject matter of this video is a very simple mouse. A basic mouse it's just a uh something i came up with just to use uh you know so i can talk about uh using insert part and, and the master model sort of concept so this is the assembly of the parts that i put together and i'll jump over into the master model and just explain a few things okay so we're over in the master model so the whole idea with master model is you have geometry in here that is shared across multiple parts. So the general form here, um, I've got a sketch, you know, like a side elevation of the mouse and a plan view. These things are shared across the upper and lower case as well as the side. So I try and keep the master model as lightweight as possible. I'm not going to weigh this down with with geometry that isn't needed. I'll go into this in, in depth a bit later, but there's like a split in the key plate that doesn't need to be in here because it only affects the key plate. If it only affects one part, I try and keep it out of the master model. This is a very simple master model, mainly using sketches. I do have a side surface in here as well, um, just to make the product a bit more interesting and to show how things update. Okay, so I'm just gonna roll quickly through this model. So pretty simple sort of side elevation and I've set an, a side extent plane which is 40 mils out. So I'm going to extrude up to that plane and then I've got my plan view which is a sketch on the top plane, simple arc with a dimension rolling each end. Then I've drawn my Roll wheel center and diameter and creating an extrude and added a full round to make that. Added a full round to create the surface on the outside of the wheel. And I've created main part lines, so basically thicknesses of the bottom case and the top case slash key plate. Now I've got to find a boundary for the for the wheel where it intersects the top surface. So I've just co uh, converted entities to the top arc and then projected it onto the row wheel and then I've created a part line for the island. So go into the sketch, it's just an offset of that intersected curve and then a line. So yeah, all pretty simple. Just so I want to talk about the main concepts of um, insert part and there's my sweep for along the side. Again, it's just an arc and it just sweeps along this curve. That's the master model. If I jump over into, these, into the assembly and open one of these parts, you will notice at the top there is this uh, feature here. This is created by going insert part. So I'll just create a new part quickly and I'll go insert part. And then you get to pick which part you want to insert. In this case, we want to insert our master model. And you get to choose what kind of geometry you want to uh, absorb or import from that uh, master model. So in this case, we want unabsorbed sketches. We're going to keep planes, axes, surface bodies, solid bodies. Okay, so because we've inc included planes, you normally get the, um, the default planes from your, your uh, inserted part as well, so I'll hide those. So you can see there it's taken on basically all the geometry out of my master model. Okay, which means I'm just going to close this and swap back over to that, that part I had open, which means now I've created a sketch by converting entities out of the main control sketch of the master model, and I've extruded that sketch out to that plane that I created, which was an extents plane, side extent, I've cut that back with this curve here. Again, this curve is in the master model. And then I have 
made an extrude cut here for the island, again using, making a sketch, convert entities out of that sketch that's in the master model. And now I've got, just to make this a bit more interesting, I'm, I've run a replace face to replace this outside face with that swept surface that's in the master model. So if you haven't used replace face before, it's pretty straightforward. You pick the face you want to replace, and you pick the face that's going to replace it. Um, simple as that, mainly. Okay, what else have I got in here? I've got a move face feature, which gives us some clearance. So I've moved the inside face 0.2 millimeters. I've added a sketch cut here to allow some clearance for the keys to move and done the same with the island. And I've added a cut here, like a split between the keys so they can move independently. This is what I was saying, that's, that's a sketch I've added in here and a cut. That doesn't need to be in the master model because it doesn't affect anything in the master model. And I've got some fillets and mirrored the body over. Okay, I won't go through each part in detail like this, but it's basically, everything's pretty simple. Same with these side walls. So again, it's got the same import, simple mouse at the top, and then some extrudes, some cuts, replace face and a shell. Okay, so the beauty of doing this is now I've got all these parts, we can go back over into the master model, and you might say, oh, okay, this side side uh, elevation here. I actually want to make it 22 wide at the front and so 28 at the back. And we'll rebuild that in here so our sketch is updated. If we go back to the assembly, any affected parts will update. Um, so this is now updated. Let's try changing the side surface. So if I go back to the master model, So could say instead of having instead of having this uh, surface biased so it um, tucks in over to the top more, we could make that maybe one millimeter and this one three, rebuild. And now it's tucked in under more, underneath more than the top. Walk back over to the assembly and have a look at the front. You can see that that alteration in the master file has trickled down to the parts. So this is a very useful way of managing surfaces and features that span over multiple parts, like common surfaces. If you didn't do this, you'd have to update each part individually, and that could be a nightmare if you got one of the dimensions wrong or something like that. All right, I'm just going to skip back over to the master, and we'll just do it. We'll make one more alteration, maybe, maybe the uh, the wall thickness on the side here. We're going to the master here, got main part lines, I make that say two millimeters and update here, we swap over, you can see that update has been reflected in the part. So yeah, pretty useful. Okay, so that's it for this first video. Just wanted to cover an intro to master modeling and show how the alts to the master model are updated or they trickle down into the parts that reference the master model and we don't have any dependencies in this assembly. So the master model is not in this assembly. Each of these parts is assembled with the part origin being coincident to the assembly origin. Okay, so I'm gonna follow up because I think this is uh this little simple design here is 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 good place to cover doing some configs. So maybe let's pretend this is a a concept model and we can set up some configurations where you can control like wall thickness, the shape of this outside, the, the width of the island etc and then you can have those as configs in, in an assembly and you can just flip between them. Yep. So that will be the next video following this one up. Thanks for watching, Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio, bye.